everybody, it's that time of the week, Draymond's Knowledge. Welcome, Vic. How's about that? You enjoy that for an introduction? Oh, that's champion Martin, lad. <laughs> oh, I can't oh. do the accent. I've been walking me whip it, and I've worked up a hell of a thirst. So, uh, <laughs> if you'd be so kind, Marcus, over there to join me, let's have a drink some. Oh, champion, I'll, I'll toast to that, lad. I'll toast to that. So, what, what have you got this week then? Okay. Show us what we've got. It's exciting because I have no idea. So I have a Shiner Oktoberfest. And I know we're into November, but I had one lingering in the fridge, as you do. I never got round to it. So this is going to be my, my beer this week. Um, and I'll go into that momentarily. Uh, what about you there, uh, young squire, farmer? <laughs> Well, in this uh, day and age of lockdown and uh, vice versa, I, I thought that maybe I'd try something a little more local, as close to the doorstep as we could. I know over in Texas, you've got an abundance of breweries uh, being such a vast place. But over here, we've got some smaller breweries and one that I found which provided this intriguing beer that I saw called Lost and Found. Ooh. So from where I am at the moment, we are talking maybe 15 to 16, 17 miles, something like that. Very but likely. So should we, get, should we do a pour? Let's get it going and then we can chat about it because we always chat and forget to drink at the start. So I'll let you do your pour and, and then I'll pour mine. Yeah, we do, do tend, tend to ramble a little bit. So let's get the pause going and then we can talk about it as we step. So I got my lovely uh, Samuel Smith glass today, a fine British brewery, some fantastic mm. ciders. Um, you, should, you should do a zoom up on the camera before you pour it. Or maybe after if that little shield on the front. Oh, oh that's a bit yeah. Can you see? Oh, that's a big one, yeah. Um, so yeah, very un-Texan glass, but there we go. Shiner would approve, I'm sure. So a nice pour there, not a full pint. Um, so yeah, I uh, I'll take I'll get I get going with this and take a smell and a taste. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very European in in smell, and that I'll talk a little bit about that um, because it does relate to the brewery itself, and it does remind me of. Um, you know, you're going into the winter season, um, autumn, winter, it has that smell to it. Ooh. Oh, I could neck that. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. That's it, just neck it, I'll neck mine, that'd be the end of the bloody visit. Just a short one today, lads. <laughs> right, so I'll pour mine and then we can go back to yours and have a little chat about volume and the brewery and whatnot so yeah before i do open it hold up your i, I saw a, an interesting looking uh, bottle opener there any oh yeah anything let's have a look at that sorry uh what do you think it's it's, it's nice a little bit, isn't it? i was searching around for just a bottle opener and uh, i forgot about this one that my wife got from somewhere Look at that, it's a lady's leg. Saucy. Oh, saucy. Oh, <laughs> oh. You, sir. oh, look what's at the top. Anyway, Whoa. let's see if it works. Maybe we should do a uh, bottle opener of the month. Yeah, or well, we could do a bottle opener as a prize. We could invent one. So there we go, I've, uh, I've undone that. I've stupidly done it off camera, but it went something like that. And uh, here we are, lost and found. It's a blonde ale, so let's see how it pours. I know you enjoy the pour. I do. It's something yeah. special. Horses for courses and that, but if you if you enjoy watching a good oh look at that bit of dribble for you there. It's a lovely glass, Mart. Well, it's that one I had. I haven't got very I do like it because you can get a pint in it. Yeah. Well, I've a little bit left uh, But that's us Europeans for you, or British. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy all drink. So there we go. There, let's um, wow, big pint. 
that is a price. Still got some in the top. I didn't want to overfill it while I'm holding it up, but it's uh, it is a golden blonde beer. So let's have a little. What style is that? Yeah, it's a blonde ale. It's a North Devon ale. I'll go into that a bit later on. Got an orangey, limey scent to it. Very floral. Ooh. But it's a, I'd say it's more of a summery pint. Where you've gone a bit darker, obviously being a blonde, you can imagine drinking this on a lovely summer's day, especially from where it comes from, which I'll go on about it later. Yeah, maybe a nice Devon pub on a country afternoon. That would probably go down well, wouldn't it? It's lovely. It's a, it's a blonde beer. They, they said, uh, be careful of the... There could be a little touch of sediment in it because it's a proper old style that they use to brew. Well, that's nice. It's uh, very nice. So I, I don't know if... Should we... Do you want to go on about your beer first and then I'll give a rundown of mine? Yeah, yeah, let's get into it a little bit. Let's get down to the nitty gritty, as we say. Um, so Ooh. my yeah, my my beer is is from a brewery called Shiner. Now, Shiner is the biggest independent brewery in Texas. Oh, Ducks champion. Um, and um, we're talking old here. So this brewery was established in a small, te- the town itself is called China, China, Texas. And it was established in 1909. Um, so it's pretty old, really. Um, but kind of harking back to the, the style, this is an Oktoberfest style beer. But it, the, the brewery itself was set up by German and Czech immigrants to Texas. Um, yeah. So kind of the, the, really what they wanted to do, they were kind of disappointed they couldn't find beers like back home. So they yeah. wanted to capture that European style, you know, lagers and the such and that German style of beer. So that's what they did. They set up this brewery. It's one of the oldest independent breweries in the USA and obviously the oldest in Texas. Yeah. So, and they do a massive range. You know, they, they have some wonderful summer summer ales, some fruity ales. Um, the, the biggest beer they do is the Shiner Bock, which is kind of a darkish kind of lager style. And, you yeah. know, you'll find that everywhere. So we, we've made the mistake again of uh, not having maps to hand, because I'm always interested. I know that you, when I'm talking about place in Britain, you've got a good grasp of it, because you're obviously British and Welsh. But... Um, myself i know a few towns in texas but you know i'd like to how far is it from you yeah it's probably about probably an hour hour and a half drive i actually went there um it's it's more um more east of of san antonio um i actually went there probably a few weeks ago um met some uh friends for lunch and we passed through china and i didn't even stop at the brewery I, <laughs> to my uh to my uh shame sorry what what did you say then you didn't pop in and you were passing i know what, what's wrong with him <laughs> shame on you sir um yeah so um it's a little well, maybe fun. they'll invite you back I hope so when when they see this wonderful video and how highly i rate it i'm I'm sure they will. It'd be an open well, uh, hang on a second. Let's, uh, I hope you're not going to give a good rating for like you're bribing them to invite you. You've got to be honest here. It's just straight down. It you are right. But if you enjoy the beer, you enjoy the beer. I'm going to be honest about China beers when we get down to the rating because um, for me, it's a little bit hit and miss. But we'll talk about that. And I'm really but enjoying it. What percent is that beer then, the old shiner there? Actually, it's pretty strong because a lot of them are a little lighter than this. You know, they're normally kind of around the 4, four, four <laughs> point five range. But this one is a 5.7. Oh, right. So it's creeping up there, you know? Yeah, it's popping up. Yeah, lovely. So what about, let's have a look at, if you hold the bottle up then, let's have a little look at the uh, design. Can you all see the, that? I think what's on the... The, the silhouette what is that 
It looks like a unicorn type thing. It's actually a goat with a three oh. tail. So Ooh. there's one either side. I'm not quite sure if it's that's the emblem of um, uh, uh, Shina itself. I don't think so. But okay. it's. Um, I'm going to read you a bit of spiel from the back of this, just to kind yeah. of give you an idea. Every September, millions of people from around the world gather in Munich to celebrate Oktoberfest. With a name like that, you'd think it would start a month later. See, that's kind of Oktoberfest. It's a little bit deceptive. Just a fact here for you, it's the biggest beer festival in the world. Um, but hey, it's a tradition. And if you can't be there in person, you can be there in spirit with this classic brew made from Munich and caramel malts, along with German-grown Halletau tradition and Herzbrucker, now we're getting into it, hops. Oh, bloody hell. Yeah, yeah, I think they don't bother reading out the barcode. <laughs> <laughs> so you get the idea. <laughs> yeah. So how's it tasting it? And you've, you've drunk a little bit of it now. What are you saying? You just said you could down it, but it does yeah. look lovely. It's halfway down now. It's, it's, it's warming up a little bit, so I'm pulling up some of the kind of um, malty kind of tastes to it. Yeah, it's nice. It's refreshing. It's not too... Some, some of these beers can be overpowering, especially if the, if the alcohol content is strong. But no, it's just very easy drinking. I could probably polish off one or two pints of this, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking the same with this one I'm drinking. Like I said, it's... I'll hold it up a bit closer to get a look at the graphic on that. But the, the actual beer itself is very nice to drink. Very pleasant summer drink. In fact, well, I could drink, you know, drink this all night. One of those that you could drink a few pints of, definitely. But I don't know if you can quite see. There's the... I like the label on this. Um, That's fantastic. I couldn't find out. I couldn't find about, about the artist. But um, it's local, so I'll give you a little bit of history on it. As much as I could find out, anyway, it's a very small uh, craft brewery. It's from the Madrigal Brewery, which Madrigal is a poetic word which is also sacred. It's about singing voices unaccompanied. So it's very sort of mysterious, which I quite like, which sort of links into this. Well, surprisingly enough to me, because I saw on the front when I saw it in the shop North Devon I thought right well, I'm having that when I took it home and read about it actually from Hill Bay oh wow old Hill yeah. Bay on the coast so we're talking on the coast between Ilfracombe okay. and Coombe Martin where I used to live um, you've got a little bay called Hill Bay and behind it there's a tea rooms there with a water wheel and then there's sort of a very very small industrial estate well, the guys that are behind this um, bought an old Edwardian gas works, like the building, and they've converted it into sort of like this microbrewery. And um, I couldn't find out when they started. They have got a website, but it's very small. Um, and I'm hoping now I know where it is, um, because it's not a place you pass. It's sort of just off the main road. So if you didn't know to go down there, you'd have no reason to go there. So yeah. now I know it is. I mean, they are still serving in lockdown at the moment just to go and buy beers from them. But I want to go when it's fully open because you can go in the tap room and uh, <clears throat> hopefully get chatting to a couple of the guys down there. I'd like to maybe do, especially on the smaller ones and being in North Devon as well for me, I'd, I'd like to do maybe like a... I don't know, like a, a visit where these guys that set these small businesses up that have become successful with brewing and, and, and crafting their own beers and tastes and designs could give us a little sort of interview or a little bit of history, you know, get, get, their, get their view on um, how they've maybe struggled or been successful with setting up what must be their dream job. Do you know, that's a fantastic idea, Martin, because I talk, obviously, at so many craft places that we go to around here, and I do get talking to the brewers, and we know quite a few now. 
like Marcus at Weathered Souls, and there's a guy out at Five Stones. So that that's I think I'd like that, and hopefully the viewers would like us to maybe yeah, start I, doing I, that. You know, this is this is just two mates like we said before. <coughs> Excuse me, having a laugh, having a catch up, and having a drink together because we can't physically do that. Not just because of lockdown, but because we live thousands of miles apart now. But it's also about championing, championing, championing. Is that the word? You even you, you can't even say it. It's all about it. pro- <laughs> it's all about promoting. Let's cut that book. <laughs> no, it's about promoting. Um, you know our love of beer and and well, local produce in this case, but. You know, we like drinking beer. It's nice to hear a little bit of history behind it, especially since these are smaller businesses, the ones that I've got a couple from now. And, um, you know, that the one you're talking about, they had an infancy at some stage, but obviously no, yeah. one, from, no one from 1909 is probably alive to tell you about it. But these guys are, you know, fairly recent. I believe that they first set up in Linton and Lynmouth. Okay. But not a hundred percent on that. I did read that somewhere, but on their current website it doesn't mention it. Although they have got a beer called Burning House, which is to do with Linton and Lynmouth. They've got twelve beers at the moment. I'll list a couple of them, uh, or a few of them. We've got North Coast Voodoo, which is an IPA. We've got Monkey Fist, which is an old North Devon ale, uh brew recipe burning house as i mentioned and we got a north devon porter which is called severed hand now just to go on their website which is easy to find you type in uh, madrigal craft brewery it's only a couple of pages very small website but it's got the pictures of all of the bottles they currently brew and uh, are for sale and the artwork on them is stunning you know really lovely um, artwork a lot of it's to do with the sea and the coast um, really nice sort of place I'm looking forward to going there I mean it's bizarre that I used to run past there every weekend Hill Bay and we've been there plenty of times together when you used to live here yeah and in absolutely fact, you, <laughs> that's where you uh, went fishing with your phone by mistake if I remember <laughs> oh yeah, back in the day, I thought maybe it would recover, but I know just strolling along as you do with your phone in your top pocket of your shirt. Oh, a nice rock pool! Let's have a look in there. Don't go rock pooling with in loose clothing. Is the lesson from that? <laughs> it rusted before our eyes, didn't it? I remember oh, that. I know. I tried to recover it, but no. Such but that way. was in the good old days when phones used to cost about thirty quid and not nearly a thousand. So it's not such a bad thing, was it? <laughs> I wish yeah, had so, a Nokia. Yeah, <laughs> I would have survived. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Drop um, it in your so this beer here, I better tell you a bit about the actual beer I'm drinking. It is. It is an ale, as I said, a blonde ale, and it's five percent. And it's called Lost and Found, and um, I really like it. I never had a never had a beer from their brewery before. Didn't even know about them, like I admitted. And I'm looking forward to trying to get a couple of these other ones. And oh. certainly, I, I think I'd like to go out there because they've got a couple of. Um, I've looked. It's not an actual pub, but they've got like a bit where you can buy drinks and sit outside and drink. And I think, you know that you can't go at the moment properly like that but when lockdown's lifted and everything's back to normal hopefully be nice on a spring day to go down there and enjoy a couple of beers and go down on the beach afterwards or vice versa so yeah. i think it'd be it's so surprising that something like that was there and um i never knew about it <laughs> Well, no, I mean, you're trying to, you're finding these places and I'm glad you're finding these little breweries because like you say, there seems to be so many here and not so many there. And especially these off the beaten track ones, you know, one of my favourites, Five Stones, you would miss it if you were driving down the road. It's kind of down a, f- a farm tra- track. Don't and uh, now, it's week. Oh, oh, sorry, Terry. Yeah. Terry shouting again at me. I thought we agreed on... Drags of the week. 
<laughs> Sorry. Excellent. Terry, I thought we agreed, Marco, off camera, that we, we was going to keep Terry out of the room. I tried, but he's he's kind of adamant, you know. He, he he's no reasoning with this guy. He, he just well, you got, you you promised him a job that he, I didn't agree with you, which was to to let him bring up the dregs of the week. Now, <laughs> you know, I know. I know. Yeah, what you now it's dregs of the week. Shut up! All right. Terry. Okay, we're getting on with it. Okay. <laughs> Come on then. All right. So, yeah. I, so I'm guessing it's time for dregs of the week. So. Well, it's getting on a bit. I'm at my dregs. So, to, to be fair on Terry, he's seeing me and he's seeing at my dregs, but he's not seeing your pint over there. You know, well, I, had pint. Pint. I didn't have a schooner's worth. I had an actual pint. You didn't have a shandy half. <laughs> <laughs> Go on then. Let's have your drink of the week while I try and catch up. All right. I was debating this, and I think I'm going to go back to my original dreg. Um, so I won't mention my other dreg, but my dreg is abbreviating things too much. Um, as in LOL, lol, as some people call it, or um, what's the other one? L, uh, there's so many. KK is one that came up this week for OK. I mean, why are you writing KK for OK? OK is two words anyway, two letters anyway. So it's yeah. it just it irks me, but you. I mean that whole. I think we. I think you're sounded like a proper dad there, because that lol thing's been going for years. And in fact, the first time I ever it ever happened to me, if you want, or it ever came across, was a friend of ours that you know in Barnstable, and um, we'd been at Samick, and I text them, and then they text me back. I don't know the reply and at the end of it he put lol and this was like about 10 years ago I suppose something like that and I thought and I'm thinking what the f what does it mean lol and then I thought it meant lots of love <laughs> for ages for ages I honestly thought lol meant lots of love and I was like what's going on here but, but uh you know, I, some, some local youth person told me it was laugh out loud, and oh, and then I did laugh out loud. What a fool, oh, man! But oh, you got to let's be honest. How many of these people are writing this and laughing out loud? There I am, LOL, with stony faces, just yeah. staring at their phone. LOL. I mean, come on, I don't believe it. And and the other one is laughing my ass off um I oh, that's that, that's a band isn't it called l uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, M -F 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 -M. <laughs> some bullshit like that but i only agree they only abbreviated it because they couldn't fucking spell it <laughs> that's probably the real reason but at the end of the day they they i i have exceptions like eta uh, that's fine in my book and OK is just, OK is short for OKAY, right? Which is fine. But why yeah. would you try, change OK to KK? Are you trying to abbreviate two letters to two letters? I mean, I'm just perplexed. Well, it's not abbreviating, it, is it? No. <laughs> and it's, <laughs> um, and then some of these ones I just have to look up. It's like they, I'd have a text with abbreviations and it'd be full of abbreviations. So there's no words in it. It's can, you imagine, can you imagine Lenny Henry saying, K -K. <laughs> <laughs> instead of, okay. No. 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 I mean, whoever that person is, just delete them. I, and I wonder so, if people drop it into conversation as well. They, they actually say, they sat next to somebody saying, LOL. There's got to be people that do that. <laughs> Luckily, I've not met one. But no, no, that, no one. Yeah, it's it's a it's an urukami, it's a pet peeve, and I to this day I still do not use LOL. I refuse. You know, I'm probably one of the few. Oh no, you as well. You've never used that with me, but it's, we're uh, we're no, the I, last holdout. I do like we're texting and stuff. Obviously, 
like if we're putting how are you do put the letter u but that's just for quickness but to put lol when it's not needed or it, you know trying to sound young or something like that it's just bullshit i mean i haven't really i haven't i had so many irks of the week but like i said to you briefly off camera like in this woke society that the world finds its way, you know, tiptoeing through at the moment, I'm not talking about racism, don't get me wrong there, but just anything seems to offend anyone. But a lot of my stuff would offend a lot of people, but it pisses me off or irks me or is one of my dregs. Well, um, one of my ones, and it's just a brief one, really. It's, uh, it's not road rage. It's more like road politeness. It's like etiquette, you know? Okay. Now, when, we're, when I moved from Essex to Devon, the roads in Devon are a lot of rural roads, proper long rural roads. You can drive for miles and not hit a big road. Um, so there's lots of narrow lanes and high banked uh, tiny little roads here and there and um when when you first move here and you've been driving somewhere else like essex where most of the car most of the roads are wide and there's plenty of room you um learn to drive differently you have to learn how to reverse properly and you know get enough space to pass on narrow lanes and things like that and often you could reverse for a good couple of hundred meters to let someone pass yeah. Now, that's the way it is down here. Now, I have got used to when you either let someone through or they let you through that you politely wave or sometimes I, if I'm feeling quite youthful, I give them the car knucks, which is <laughs> always, always a bit of fun. And before with a, a friend of ours that you know that I worked with at some time, we used to write thank you on the back of our gloves because... We were young and foolish, but we were still polite, you know. It's yeah. the it's the fact when you do something like that and someone is just stony faced, they won't even do the farmer's finger where they just give you one finger. Just a little one, yeah. Yeah, just or, a little one, but that's the, at least the farm like farmers just they're like oh, just, Yeah. It's fine. not full on like the bestman's way, like bestman when you see them, they're like uh, and, or a guy sometimes yeah. we're from, and that I'll do anything and they're like oh dad why did you do that and I'm like they're going in the other direction they're not going to turn around and chase us you know go hi yo or something completely stupid like that mm. but it's when they don't thank you yeah just nothing it, no it, it's you know, it's a big yeah. thing here because like I moved from Britain and a lot of people wave there and I got to Texas and nobody waves to anybody in the car yeah it's a well, it's the same when you go back to Essex, when you go back to Essex, because I've been living down here and when I'm driving back there and I only go back like once a year, something like that. And like I let someone through, no one in Essex waves, they just drive like, like you could do it. And it, it makes my blood boil when I'm back there. I'm worse. Fury. <laughs> just couldn't be bothered to wave for someone that's politely let you through or reversed. But getting on to driving. <coughs> You've just now, a minute ago, I didn't have a fucking proper dreg. Now I have. I, <laughs> now I have, right? Because as you know, at the moment, without going into too much detail, I'm a key worker swab testing around the whole of Somerset and, and mostly Devon. Sometimes I drift into Somerset. Over the wonderful Exmoor Hills, the Quantock Hills. Anyway, that's beside the point. I went to a town which won't be named, but it sounds like Wellington because it is. <laughs> and, um, I had to, as a swab, as a person, I have to park as close to the people's property as I can possibly get because I'm loading hazardous things. So I pulled up outside these people's house and they didn't have a driveway and it was on a thing. And I parked in a loading bay, and a completely empty loading bay. You could have got six or seven vehicles in there. In the front of my car, I placed the letter that we're all given to explain why we're parked up. 
we're key workers and that we're doing this job and blah, 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 without going into too much. And never had a problem before. I went and saw these people for 20 minutes. I had their samples, came back out. When I come back, big yellow sticker, front of my windscreen, Bosch. Bloody hell. 70 quid fine, right? I was fucking fuming. So I rung the number on the back, got a lovely woman in the council office. And she said, I'm so sorry, I apologise, but you have to go through the process of appealing it. Take photos of your car, take photos of the letter, explain what's happened, and they'll let you off. But I, she couldn't do it. I'm like, fair enough, that's good. Mm. But I was bubbling. And I won't lie to you, because I had a little bit of time before I had to be somewhere else. I drove around Wellington three times trying to find that little fucker. <laughs> <laughs> I was... <coughs> I worked myself into a rage where I didn't know what I would do if I saw him. But I knew that it wouldn't be good. So there and you go, folks. You didn't him. see anything in the paper. So Luckily, no, 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 no. All you found is a radio. <laughs> but, <laughs> no. but luckily enough for whoever it was, him, her, whoever, I had a duty to continue my job. I had to be somewhere else. So after three times driving around Wellington, I had to leave. Well, I had an email yesterday, two weeks later, saying they have refused my appeal and that they will reduce it to £35 and they take into consideration that I'm working for the government and that I have to be close, but I wasn't physically loading anything big. So I tell you what. Oh, oh, oh. That, is, that, I've got, that makes me I've bother. I've got to pay the £35 for parking for 20 minutes on an empty pavement. Yes, it was loading. I get it. Hold my hands up. I was doing a job explaining it. And this little fucker, whoever it was, decided yeah. to slip it on there. That's so tough. luckily, I haven't been to Wellington this week. I might be next week. Watch out. If you're listening, watch out, little fella. Ah, that's red tape gone bananas. Just taking it to the next level. Uh, that makes me boil. Just uh, what you just said, that makes me my blood boil right there. God. Yeah. I do. I mean, I do have a problem letting things go. I hold my hands up. I do have a problem. I'll confess to that. I'll confess to that. Um, it's cathartic. It's 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 good for the soul. So that man or woman had a job to do. Yeah. Maybe maybe the poor soul couldn't read. Maybe they couldn't. I'll give them the benefit. I'm just yeah. kind of being, um, I'm going to play devil's advocate here and just say this, that not f from your perspective, but from a company perspective. Can't they give you some kind of, not just a letter in the window, can't they give you some kind of uh, big banner to put on your car or something like that to show? Well, it, I, it was I, an lost letter. It was a, um, you know, it's a proper uh, what official you government it? letter. Well, it's a, it's it's from the well, I can't say, but yes, yeah, basically, yeah, of course, yeah. So it, it's official, and I put it clearly in the window. But like I said, maybe, maybe the chap chapess couldn't read, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Cool. But you know, I was made redundant. I've taken on this job, and I'm trying my best to keep my family floating, as most fathers and mothers do. They do whatever they can, and thirty-five yeah, quid. Times. 30, 35 quid still 35 quid goes a long way right there that's a lot of money and maybe i mean the big test is when i go to wellington next yeah. because <laughs> let's, I see, let's think about that i see one of these people strolling along and we did know someone that was a parking warden once and i know they're under pressure to stick out tickets but I have to have a word. You know, it might get me nowhere, but I've got to say. Just to question say. them. Just have a question and answer session. Look, I've got some questions for you. I want your opinion on this. No, what, what, no. Don't, well, I don't know. Maybe it's not. I've never, 
don't need no 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 if i saw them i would lecture them i didn't need answers <laughs> they, they've already made a mistake marco they've already made a mistake mate. you know that it's they need to be told you know hopefully i'm not going to go down that road i've almost veered down i've almost veered down a cliff edge so i'm gonna just reverse a bit yeah. and get back a bit that's my trick and when i finish this i'll never think of it again but do you know what there may be a wonderful oh. brewery in wellington and that's what you gotta look for the 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 silver lining in the cloud or the cloud with the silver yeah. lining. <clears throat> but knowing my luck i'll go and visit that brewery and they'll say oh here comes such and such they're a big fan of this and they can tell you about the beginnings and, and in he'll walk in a bloody parking officer's uniform <laughs> watch this space <laughs> yeah. as uh, i once as i once said to appledore when i was standing in insto i'll say it to wellington fuck you wellington <laughs> fuck you on that and on those wonderful words of advice we should probably wrap this up with our well, um, little rating. thing ref, one little thing ref that we've got to tell our avid viewers is that uh, over the next few couple of weeks myself and marco we're gonna we decided we really wanted to do a big um review of stouts because like i think marco said the ref said if few weeks a couple of weeks ago maybe in our first one that we've got a lot of stouts it's the time of season for stouts and things like that and we wanted to review them well i've certainly got a few and i know that you have so we decided haven't we that we're gonna do two or three individual reviews which should be sort of five ten minutes long same again mark out of ten brief um on the brewery and the beer what our thoughts are and then we'll come together in a couple of weeks and review we'll probably review other beers in between but we'll do a joint stout one again um but we can't wrap it up ref because we've not marked it no you're right let's get down to that look out for our stout specials uh, in between our draymans um but yeah let's not get out of you until you get our rating so I'll get straight to my Shiner Oktoberfest because I'm sure everybody's getting ready for bed. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to give this, I'm a fan of Shiner. It was probably one of my um, first beers coming to Texas. My first, well, my introduction into the craft beer scene because before I came to Texas, I wasn't big into craft. I just drank lager every night, Carlin Black Label. Um, what? What, what does it say on the hobgoblin? Afraid of the dark lager boy. That's what she <laughs> Oh, I don't know lager lout. Uh, no, I'm not one of those. <laughs> so I'm going to give this because I got into the mood a bit and, and, you know, it's getting a little bit cooler here. October, autumn's come in. So I'm going to be generous with this and not because I like China, you know, not because I want a little visit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but let's give it a seven. Just a plain old seven. Um, I, um, <coughs> surprising, surprising. I'm pretty, I really enjoyed it. And I, there are other Shiners I would probably rate a lot lower, but I really in, enjoyed the taste of this. I think, I think we need to um, also, like, we can give an overall score, like impression, but like this is a blonde beer, so like to, to rate it against the stout is a bit odd. So I think when we're giving our scores, we're giving it as if we were drinking other beers, unless we drink an absolutely tip top one that we can't think could be improved or, well, not improved, but that could be like our top beer, you know, like yeah. our yeah. Nirvana if you want. So yeah, a blonde beer. I've enjoyed it, and I, I'm going in at an eight. I'm going wow. in for an eight out of ten. So I really wow. liked it. I mean, they, they it says watch out for sediment. I haven't added the speck of sediment in my beer. It was clean. It was nice. And um, you know, like I said to you before, I 
hope to go back and visit and and uh, do a little video from there. I'm sure the guys there would be quite forthcoming with that. So let's see what happens. I'm excited for that visit and excited yeah. to see that, you know. Um, that would be fun. Maybe a summer visit would be cool as well. Yeah. So keep an eye on one. Most of these beers, like we said, if you type in uh, Shiner Beer, you're bound to find the website. If you type in Madrigal Beer, you will find the brief website I found. But it's you can order from it and, um, you know, good luck to you if you want to taste it. It's it's all out there, like we said before. There's no such thing as a bad beer. It's just that some beers are better than others. Remember that? I like that. And, yeah, check out our Instagram and you'll see some photos and a brief description and even a tagging of the breweries where possible. So, uh, And we will be posting our little stout specials on Instagram. <sighs> Something to look forward to, folks. Uh, winter's here. And we will wrap this up and we will see you soon. So, ta-ta. Be well. Happy drinking and stay safe out there. Bye-bye.